Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Data is exploding, mostly in the form of unstructured data, and it's really pressing IT professionals to find new ways to solve these important challenges. But it's more than just the growth of data. There's a whole list of storage challenges that we have to address. Joining me on the whiteboard is Peter Schoberg. He's the Vice President of Cloud and Mobility with Hitachi. Peter, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, George. It's great to be here. So let's talk about some of these challenges you have written up here. That, that seems like a long list. I almost just want to leave. Um, so uh, when we talk about cloud, what, what are some of those sort of things that people are dealing with? Well, there's no doubt there's a lot that our customers are facing these days. The cloud is simply something every data center is considering. How do I integrate with it? How do I move towards it? How do we enable that from a storage perspective? So it becomes one of the first things we talk about when we get into this world that we're getting into, which is object storage. So that's that it's a whole conversation around hybrid and public and all those different things as well, right? Absolutely. It's how do you meet the incredible demand out there for all the different requirements? Not just one, but any one of those. Okay. Now, I'm, I'm kind of surprised to see mobile in there. How does that fit into a conversation around object storage. Nearly every data center today is looking to leverage mobile integration with their applications, with their customers, so that mobile data is at the center of this entire conversation. No one would build an app today without thinking mobility first. Right, and that's partly because users now want to have all their data with them all the time on any device, even from a Starbucks, right? Absolutely. Wherever they are, that's where business is going to be done. Exactly. Okay. So obviously, um, so Software-defined storage, that's, that's a big issue. What, talk a little bit about that. Most organizations are looking to manage costs. They're right. looking to, hot, to take advantage of those commodity products that are in the market and leveraging software to really be the differentiator. And that's a big focus of the challenges today. So the key there is just trying to keep a cap. Your budgets aren't increasing, but the data is just growing like crazy, right? Absolutely. The next one up is almost all budgets are static or being managed very tightly, yet data continues to grow. How do you design a data center, modernize a data center to accommodate that? Right. And then finally, the, the big one I think there is protecting it and the whole thing around uh, you know, keeping it and governing it. Now talk about governed though. That sounds a little bit more like regulations. How does that differ from what you guys are talking about? There's nothing new up here, but governance really is how you take responsibility for all the data in your environment, not just a particular application due to a particular regulation. That was the world of compliance. Right now, it's all data to be able to manage it to the needs of the business, regardless of who's asking. And I think that last phrase is kind of interesting to suppose, right? I think that we, we can now call that the uh, Ashley Madison problem, right? Is how do I know that my data, when I say my data is gone, it's absolutely positively gone. Absolutely, in a world where people believe they have a right to be forgotten, how do you guarantee disposition of the data? So all of these challenges fit into the world of the data center today, and often that's why organizations are moving and changing their structure in managing information. And then really a lot of these challenges are leading to the rise of object storage. So why don't you talk a little bit about just generally what object storage is in case the folks don't know. Absolutely, the key thing about object storage to note is it's really driven by software. Software is really the thing that takes advantage of whatever hardware upon which it runs to manage information as it comes in. So take a normal file, add that file into a system. That file gets enhanced with metadata about the file, both the file name, who created it, etc., but even augmented metadata, so specific things that are more valuable. It is then stored in a very different structure from that traditional file system we're used to. And that leads to, like I can do things with metadata, like maybe set a, like an expiration policy or things like that, correct? Exactly, it plays into how do you manage that data over time. Okay. So you can retain it for a set amount of time, you can dispose of that data when you, that expiration date comes up. It allows you to manage the data per object as your business requires. And now these architectures are more scalable as well, correct? Absolutely, because you're not in a traditional file system architecture, you don't have the scalability with, let's say, think of it like a bookshelf where you have a limited number of spaces to put your books. Object storage is very different. It has a structure that allows you to separate the data from the information about the data, thus allowing you to scale. It's really why almost all public clouds are built on the technology of object storage today. And that's addressing the need to scale to trillions and trillions of files that we see people having to deal with all the time now, right? Exactly, and in a global namespace. So it almost doesn't matter where it's located. I can access it with a unique identifier to find that particular piece of information. Well, let's talk a little bit about the disk that's going to store all this stuff. What's unique about that in the object use case? 
Well, as you think about this information scaling, you have different technologies. One of the big technologies is going to be erasure coding. Now built that's going to enable the use of like high capacity hard drives here, right? Because one of the problems with like an eight terabyte hard drive is if we're running RAID 5, you could wait, be months into a rebuild process, right? Exactly. Erasure coding allows you to protect that data in a different way, along with things like geodispersion to spread that data out over locations. Your protection scheme is very different in object storage. Okay, and then over here, it looks like to me you got the cloud, uh, and that, I'm going to guess that's a mobile device, is that a remote office? Exactly. So the idea isn't that you're just doing data center data. You're really looking at mobile device, remote data, and cloud data. Because this is a single instance of covering your information. So we need to provide a strategy that incorporates how your mobile device works, how your data is in any data center where it's located, and then integrating with, should you choose to, some kind of a public cloud technology. Okay, and then now when you guys deliver this package, that's I assume the Hitachi content platform? Exactly, we call this an ecosystem. So yes, it's a storage device that has our storage and our servers as part of it. It can run in any kind of environment, software only, but it leverages the ability to manage all data. So the Hitachi content platform as a product really represents an entire ecosystem to address customer challenges. Okay, and then now let's kind of wrap up with some of the use cases here. So this gives me a really good foundation to address some of these challenges, and, and I'm assuming these are some of the use cases you see people jumping on. Yeah, the Hitachi customers that are leveraging this today often begin with an archive. They think about how to keep data separate from an application for a period of time. It's very common, object storage has been in this world for a long time. But it's really moving past that. That was a single use case. Now we're moving into things like a file cloud. This is where you might replace file servers in an environment and leverage a file gateway that backends into a cloud technology. Okay, and then that gives you the, the advantages of the enhanced metadata again, the single instancing, things like that? Yeah, absolutely key is that because of the protection and scale, all this data is self-protected, self-healing. So it doesn't get into your enterprise backup technology. It really allows you to reduce cost and manage it more effectively. You know, I, I talk to uh, folks a lot about data protection. That's one of the big things I talk about. Look, if we can get rid of the 90% of the data that isn't changing, imagine how good you would be focusing on the 10% that is. Exactly. Just take the user file data out of the enterprise, put it into a file cloud, and you've addressed that. Okay. Well, talk a little bit about app development. How does that fit into this object world? What we're seeing today is new applications are born of the cloud. Just like they incorporate mobility, we know we want to be able to access that data wherever, whenever. So the applications we build today need to take advantage of a different structure. That structure comes along with object storage. So where you have metadata assigned to an object, you actually have structure on unstructured data. It's a really key differentiator because you can find the things that relate right. when they're rich media data, when it's video data or um, files from a different project. Well, that gets to you know finding the needle in the haystack. I just want to know where the what the needle is. I don't want to have to search through the whole state haystack, right? Exactly. To be able to identify and relate the data, you change how you can leverage the data. And that really leads us to this final use case, which is how object storage can support a big data initiative. Okay. You know, big data is one of those terms that has a lot of meaning in the industry. To me, it's how do you turn data into value? How do you take some of these enormous data stores, these rich media context, and put them into a project that can show business value. Object storage can be a foundation for doing all of that. Well, and object storage can also be the foundation. The other term we always hear a lot here is data lake, right? And object storage is a good foundation for that as well, right? Absolutely. When you look at what you're trying to achieve with a data lake, it's the ability to, it, to take in all data in a native format, preserve it for a certain period of time, and then begin to take value from that as your business demands. Peter, thanks very much for joining us today. Thank you, George. Good to be here. Well, there you have it. Deal with the data explosion can be really addressed with object storage. It can meet all of these challenges for you and really put you in a good position to manage all the influx of data that you're going to have through projects like Big Data. I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us.